I think the, the article was about what really gets on my nerves, actually, is that I don't think women should body shame other women, and particularly they shouldn't body shame um, other women in front of their children. So what happens a lot is when I'm out with one of my daughters, I'll hear people talking about her or what she's wearing, and they're not particularly outrageous outfits, in front of their own children. And I think that's not And what right. kind of things do they say? Well, yeah, they'll, they'll say, oh, I wouldn't go out in that, or look what she's wearing. I mean, when she had that grey dress on that you um, showed earlier when we was walking down, and one woman said to her, about 11, 12-year-old child, if you ever go out like that, I'll kill you. And, and you know, whether you're mature enough for I've it. I've always be believed that as a parent, I should never shame my child. So if she came down, I mean, I've had children crying at me because they've come down and their children, you know, their parents have said, you know, you look like a tart, go and get dressed. But is, yeah. it, is that, can I just ask? Yeah, I absolutely understand that point of view. Yeah, I do understand it. However, what I, I believe is, you know, our children have so many body image issues. And I think, you know, as, as women, we have body image issues. And there's so many things that we can't change. But I think what we can change is by saying, actually, women should be able to go out and feel comfortable. It's not like I'm sending them out in sort yeah. of, um, you know, like we're all the time or anything. But I, th I think that my job is to allow them to express themselves however they want, not shame them. And I don't think women should be shaming other, other women either, because I think that's a really big big part but that's of a big, it. Like that's 20 a big... cigarettes at 15 are you going to say well <laughs> when Bronte was about 14 I did say to if you want to ever smoke a cigarette tell me and I want you to do it here so I mean I mean it's under my control I mean she never did so but you would have let that. her at 14 well I would have had her try it you know because I think that they're going to try it anyway they're going to do it anyway you know we all we all did and our children are and I would prefer that are when they? They... Well, well, some of them are, you know, not all of them, probably, like, but I think... A certain yeah. Way. What does your husband say? Well, actually, that, the grey dress was... I mean, there was two dresses we were um, choosing between. There was a grey one and, and one I that think was... that's a lovely dress. Yeah, 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 yeah I mean, he know. preferred that and one to the one that... lovely today. Yeah, yeah. Years fantastic. Old. But we were on the train this morning and two women got on and looked at her and started whispering at each other. But that's typical. Let's not do Bronte, because I have got long legs. jealous because she looks gorgeous. Bronte, what make comments? How did you feel about uh, about your mum writing this article, and and how do you feel when people come up and comment on how you look and what you're wearing? Yeah, I, I was perfectly fine with her writing the article, and they don't usually come up to me and say these comments. They usually come up to my mum and say them, so I don't ever experience them, and I usually just sort of ignore anything that is said about me if I hear anything because I'm comfortable with my body. So it wouldn't ever make you think, actually, maybe this is a bit inappropriate or make you feel shamed. And mm. the outfit you're wearing today, yeah. I think, you know, lots it's of girls lovely, are wearing yeah. these little short suits yeah, now, and you've got a little bit of midriff showing. So, Sarah, the, the teen talk, why can it be just a nightmare for some, just a horror of awkwardness? I think what we've got to remember is our generation, you know, this didn't happen, you know, our parents were sort of sneaking, throw a sanitary pad and run away, and no one ever spoke to us about it. So we're experiencing it for the first time. Yeah. We've never had this sort of openness before. And I also think when we, when we think of it as just one talk, you know, I've got to sit you down, I've got to tell you everything all at yes. once, it's a lot of pressure. Yes. And it shouldn't be just that one talk, it should be a conversation that's happening through your child's life. So actually when it gets to this point, it doesn't feel awkward and it doesn't feel difficult because you're already talking to the so parents. You know, we all do it. You know, yeah. like, you know, everyone goes through puberty. Half, half of the, you know, the people in, in the country bleed. You know, we have yeah. periods and we shouldn't really make it feel like something dirty. You yes. know, this is yes. the first time our child's experienced anything where their body starts changing. Yeah. And that's huge. Yeah. It's a very daunting time. There's lots of research coming out at the moment that's um, showing that the teenage brain changes phenomenally. Does it? Yeah, absolutely. And all of the decision making process actually moves to the amygdala, which is like the fear and, and you know, part of the brain. So they are not adults yet, you know, their yeah. brains are still changing. And this is where we get a lot of this very difficult behaviour from them. It isn't them being difficult, it isn't them hating their parents. It's just yeah. such a confusing time. So, right. Okay, well, I think that if we're going to have the team talk with them, what we have to do, first of all, is take the pressure off ourselves. This isn't one big talk. This is an ongoing conversation. Yes. You know, we talk all the time. You know, we, yeah. we just need to think of it like, you know, like another conversation. I think also we need to remember what this is about. You know, it is a conversation about puberty, but actually it's a conversation about us, the most important person in their life, 
validating them, yeah. honouring them and empowering them with different choices. Yeah. And I think that when we can remember it's about that, we might stop panicking a little, a yeah. little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Also, I think, look out for hooks, you know, where other people are talking about things like this. There's always things going on in social media and in the media where we're mentioning puberty and difficult teenagers. Use that to, to start asking them questions. Yes, yeah, I think that's yeah. a really good thing because it's already out yeah. there. And I think get yourself prepared as the parent because yeah. when you're prepared, you'll feel more confident and yeah. you'll feel more at ease. And then, of yeah. course, your child will feel yeah. more at ease. We have to pick our battles really carefully. Right. You know, and often it's just that they just want to be left alone. You know, tell them that you're there if they want to speak to them and let them have their experience. I mean, sometimes we're in bad moods and we don't want people yes. to come to come near yes. us, but we don't expect people to keep prodding us and yet we sort of deal with teenagers a little bit differently. You know, they're in a it's bad so mood. It's so true that, isn't it? I suppose so about, I think we have like to honour, you know, what they're feeling and where, where they are. I mean, you know, I'm thinking of my daughter particularly, huge introvert she wasn't a talker and i'd had to leave her to sort of yeah. be sad for sometimes quite a while until she'd come up and speak to me yeah. but you know what they'll always come back if you've got a great yeah. relationship with you yeah. and if there is something wrong they'll tell you and i don't think we should keep sort of yeah. prodding them to be happy you know and i think that we've just got to stay strong throughout that and, and be the parent you know be the adult and let them you know, go off and do what they want i mean i, I heard it described as You've just got to hold the rope while they're thrashing around. Yes. And keep the rope held tight, and they'll come back when they when they need to. What about if you really are concerned? Yeah, I think we've got to appreciate that, you know, not every child is going to want to talk through everything. Yeah. And I think the best thing we can do as parents is ask a question. You know, okay, we need to talk about this. It's really important. How should we do it so it's not so awkward? So yeah. I can, you know, I've got a very introverted older child, and um, she was, there was no way that she was going to sit down and talk to me like the conversation you and Maddie yeah. have had. And so I had to ask her, you know, yeah. how should we start this conversation? And what she wanted was a book. She wanted to think. And then she wanted to write me a list of questions that I would answer. Oh, and that, that was okay. You know, so it's yeah. not always talking. It's also listening uh, to, to what that child wants and how it's going to work for that child. Uh, never, never too late. Yeah, it is never too late. You've taken the first step today by ringing. It's a really, really brave, courageous thing to do. Mm. And I think this shows how much it haunts people. You know, it doesn't go away. And I think no. we have to deal with it and we have to get the help we need. Did you, ever, did you ever tell anybody, anybody close to you, or do you ever talk about it with anyone quite so much? Yeah, and getting right. rid of the guilt, I think. A lot of rape victims feel so much guilt and they keep yeah. it in. And actually, when we speak, we let go of that guilt and we start to heal, which mm. I think is so important. Uh, mm. when I, woke up, I, was... I mean, I, I work with lots and lots of young people and a lot of them, a big majority of them, are actually turning their back on this sort of behaviour. You know, drink levels are going down with the young people. So, yes, there is a majority of, you know, there's some of them doing it, but I think the majority of those not doing it is actually growing. And, and um, I think that, you know, when did having friends and alcohol become, like, interlinked? You know, I, I don't understand that. And I think that, you know, people want a friend that can be there, a they can rely friend. on them, that's genuine, yeah. not someone who's just your friend when they're drunk. Yeah. So I think that people like, um, you know, your brother, um, are, are people that they, people want at university. Mm. You know, this is the sort of person I want my daughter being friends with. Mm. And yeah, I think there was a like one that meets him, loves him, yeah. and I said, just get a drink, and no one has to know that it doesn't have alcohol in it. Yeah. It means you, you can work that out yeah. and, and be strong. And these are the, pa um, the conversations that parents need to be yeah. having. You know, what are you going to do? You know, how do you know when your limit is? What are you going to do when you're at that and someone offers you a drink? And I think we don't always have these conversations because we're scared and frightened, but absolutely think we should. I mean, I started three years ago and my daughter didn't go till next year because the reality is that that might...